Most big bads in video games are something to face bravely, head on. Especially if, you know, they're literally a big head. However, with some bosses, should you try the traditional frontal attack, your day will go worse than that time we accidentally bought GameSpot shares because we thought Reddit told us to. So your best and often only approach is to go for the stealthy option. Just consider these seven bosses you snuck up behind like a total hero. Beware of spoilers for the following games. Should eat. I know you're hungry. I've been out for quite some time. What is it? It's deer. With some human helping on the side? No. No, I, I promise. It's just the deer meat. Life in an apocalyptic world can be really tough. You have to find your own food, fight off zombies, and sometimes you wake up in a cage having been stolen by cannibals. God, I hate it when that happens. When Ellie manages to escape her captors at the lakeside resort, she doesn't have much to defend herself with. Just her switchblade, and then thanks to that switchblade, also a revolver. <laughs> It's a good thing she grabs that knife because she needs it when she gets to Todd's restaurant. No, not because the stakes are extra tough, but because Captain of the Cannibals, aka David, steals her revolver as she tries to leave. Dang it! You have to sneak Ellie around the restaurant's booths and get up nice and close for a melee attack, because if you approach from the front, you're in for a shock. No wait, I mean shot to the face. Hello, Ellie. Ouch. Tiny Ellie taking on David is a real David and Goliath moment. Except you're David and David is Goliath. Maybe I should have chosen a better metaphor. I see. <sighs> there you are, Ellie. Anyway, to make up for this disadvantage, the only way Ellie can damage David is to sneak up behind him and put a knife in his neck. That was good, kid. It's gonna be alright. Oh great, he has a machete now. That didn't happen in the Bible. At least not in the big bumper children's book of illustrated Bible stories. With this machete, David flails around after every attack, forcing you to back off after each time you stick him with a blade. <laughs> and if he catches you, the deaths are no less brutal than before. <laughs> well, that's one way to have your life cut short. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to lighten the mood. All the time you're trying to hide from David's gun or his blade, you're also trying to avoid broken crockery that could give away your location. Crockery that these monsters haven't once thought about cleaning up. I heard that. Cannibalism is one thing, but not doing the washing up after. Unforgivable. But like these cannibals eating one of their victims, this mess bites David in the butt. In your final round with him, he clocks your whole stealth thing and crouches out of sight as well, making it incredibly difficult to find him amongst all the chest-high furniture. Suddenly, the crunchy crockery is super useful, giving away where unstealthy David is. At which point, you can easily make the final sneak attack and end the fight. <laughs> this David is why they say to pick on someone your own size. I'm not here to kill anyone. Why do you continue this pursuit, Garrett? You want the primal for yourself. I don't care for the energy. I want the girl. Thief was a 2014 revival of the popular stealth series that imagined a gritty Victorian world where magic and science rub shoulders, and where crouch walking with your arms held straight out in front of you could be sustained for more than 15 seconds. Feel that in the morning. 
Unfortunately, the game was not nearly as well received as the older Sneak 'em Up games in the series it hoped to revive, perhaps because it leaned more heavily into the parts of the thief life that involve pressing your eye up to keyholes in a haunted asylum. You shouldn't be here. Ah! Crime really doesn't pay. The game tells the story of you, Garrett, a master burglar who finds himself working with a reckless fellow thief called Erin, who ends up absorbing the sinister power of a mysterious stone, which is bad luck for her. But worse luck for you, because at the end of the game, Erin summons up all the lethal power of that stone to become the final boss. Erin, of course, didn't reckon on your particularly brilliant ability to duck out of any kind of fair fight, however, because your next objective is to immediately hide, avoid the monstrous enemies she spawns to hunt you down, then sneak up silently behind her like a hero to try and steal her magic stone powers. <coughs> Even once she gets wise to your plan, this boss battle is still all about denying Erin the punch-up she clearly craves, hiding in the shadows to outsmart her. But then I suppose even the stone's magic is no match for the age-old technique of crouching behind a column. Where are you? Evade Erin and her magic floating doppelgangers, or floppelgangers if you will, for long enough to get the three pieces of your stone back and she gives in, ending the boss fight. I mean, if you can call that a fight. Come on Erin, I'll give you a free punch. I was sort of expecting more to be honest. I've had enough. When Emily Caldwin first meets Delilah Copperspoon in Dishonored 2, it's clear that this powerful witch is not someone to be messed with. Cast you in cold marble. So when you finally have to face her in a nightmare painting world, it's understandable that you don't want her facing you at the same time. But even if you miss that lesson, you'll quickly learn that head-on is not the best route to take. And there goes your ghost playthrough. See, you're in Delilah's world now, and she has backup in the form of magical replicas watching her fake painted throne. So even if you do try to stealthily and non-lethally neutralize the Delilah sitting on it, all those replicas will be alerted and come to mess you up. One option the game gives you is to sneak around and destroy the replicas one by one. The game doesn't count these as kills, so a lots of fun for anyone doing a clean hands no kill run who still wants to see the death animations. The sickos. Destroying them all summons the real Delilah at last, along with a sandstorm allowing you to sneak right up to her and either assassinate her or knock her out so you can use one of Dishonored's darkly ironic non-lethal alternatives like trapping her forever in her own painting. Oh man, not even a cool painting like the ones with the dogs playing poker. This might not be the epic showdown Delilah was expecting, but frankly, she should be grateful. After all, one alternative to all this is to go directly above the entrance where you come in and choke out the real Delilah immediately and extremely easily. Although, make sure you don't forget to crouch sneak up to her, else your day will be completely ruined. Remember your ABCs, people. Always be crouching. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a game that tells the serious story of a shinobi bodyguard on a quest to rescue his young ward, and considering how sombre and melancholic in tone the story is, you end up fighting what some would consider a weird amount of comically oversized animals. When it's not giant apes, it's a building-sized carp. And when it's not apes or carps, well, then it's the turn of the Great Serpent. 
This giant snake is a recurring enemy throughout Sekiro's adventure, and pops up whenever the game decides your bowels could really use an emptying. Yep, good and empty. Thanks, game. Avoiding becoming lunch for this train-sized pearlescent serpent will test your stealth skills to their limits, and often involves crouching perfectly still, waiting for the only acceptable moment to make a break for the next bit of cover. The Great Serpent, though I don't see what's so great about it, is perhaps the most nerve-shredding enemy in a game full of nerve-shredding enemies. Not least because, as you flee from its hissing maw, you'll doubtless be mulling the fact that this presumably is all leading up to a cataclysmic and terrifically hard boss battle, in which you will have to watch poor Sekiro get bitten in half over and over. So when, later in the game, you happen to catch the snake enjoying a cheeky nap a hundred feet below you in a valley, I mean, surely it can't be this easy, can it? Have some of that, snake! Right then, now we know how it's done, back to the carp. When do fish nap exactly? Oh, that's right, never. Impressive, Batman. I doubted you would actually return. I'm a man of my word, Victor. You should know that by now. In Batman Arkham City, Batman forms an icy allegiance with Mr. Freeze, one that quickly shatters when you reach Gotham City Police Department HQ. How are you feeling? You look unwell. Give it to me. I'm afraid I cannot do that, Batman. You have given me your last order. He might be called Mr. Freeze, but that is not cool. Despite you rescuing him, helping him to get his gear back, and gathering ingredients for him to make a cure for the Joker's sickness, Freeze isn't letting Batman himself anywhere near that cure without Bats running yet another errand for him. Sorry, no more errands, Mr. Freeze. Unless Bruce Wayne has lost his millions and has had to join the gig economy. And in that case, at least Venmo him first. You will bring me Nora, or you will die. Okay, that's just cold. With all the other boss fights being big Batman brawl fests, you might think you could get up close and wreck Mr. Freeze with your bat hands, but you'd be wrong. Bruce, remember what happened last time. Don't try to take him on in a straight up fight. He's too powerful. Hmm, maybe we should have let Oracle finish. Death is called Batman. <sighs> Ooh, ice burn. Instead of facing Freeze directly, you have to make use of Batman's gadgets to throw him off kilter, allowing Bats to sneak up and get some hits in. Dad is ready. Coming through now. But each time you have to get out of there pronto before Freeze can hit back. Plus, he learns from your methods, freezing up any tricks you previously used, forcing you to try a different approach. You have to hide and keep moving, as Freeze follows the heat signature from your footprints. I can see where you have been. And he even sends heat-seeking drones to find you when he loses track of you. you are mine. But be sneaky enough and you'll lead him on a merry dance into yet more traps. The most satisfying way to get a hit in on Freeze is to sneak up directly behind him. For instance, you can do a crafty takedown from a floor grate. Get off me! And when the grates are all frozen up, you can still go for the classic silent takedown. Oh. Well done, Bruce! You did it! Yikes, Bruce. Guess that Venmo never came through. It's not uncommon while playing Demon Souls to find yourself wondering if perhaps you might not be the good guy after all. For instance, while crushing the spine of this one dude in particular for the thousandth time just because he happens to live closest to the spawn point and has a high drop rate for edible grass. Morals be damned, give me that grass. Much more likely to have you questioning your status as hero of the game though is the battle against another with that title. 
The old hero boss is found in the game's creepy cavernous ritual path, and looks like if Guy Fieri figured out how to go Super Saiyan, which is something I think we've all thought about. You'll soon realise that the old hero is a little clumsier than that backflipping introduction would lead you to believe, because his eyes, if indeed he has any, are completely covered. Being blind to his surroundings, by far the smartest and simplest way to handle this boss is to creep up slowly behind him so he has no way of telling where you are, until the part where you smack him terribly hard with a stonking great sword of course. Which is your cue to back off, lie still and wait patiently for the old hero to stumble off so you can creep up and jab him in the back again with no adverse consequences. Then hide once more, which gives you plenty of time to think about how actually this may not be the most heroic behaviour. Extra stealthy players can make this fight considerably easier by equipping the Thief Ring, an item that makes it harder for enemies to detect you, and the poor old hero almost completely blind to your whereabouts. All you have to do is sneak up a few more times to get the killing blow, and then carry this guilty, unheroic feeling around with you for the rest of the game. Or at least until your next visit to Stockpile Thomas in the Nexus hub world. You have a heart of gold. Don't let them take it from you. Thanks, Thomas. See, Thomas gets me. Stay out of my way, Sebastian. When it comes to people you don't want to have a face-to-face -face fight with, a terrifying plague doctor wielding a flamethrower is at the top of that list. Sorry, Nicolas Cage. Second place. Such is the case with Liam O'Neill in The Evil Within 2. Once an ally to hero Ethan, you meet him again after he has been brainwashed by evil cult leader Father Theodore Wallace and turned into a harbinger, which is a posh term for a terrifying plague doctor wielding a flamethrower. You'll never understand. For that, you'll burn! Facing Liam and his fiery attacks directly is, surprise, an extremely bad idea. Not only because he'll make you rinse your ammo and health syringes faster than drinks at an open bar, but also because there is a much easier, much sneakier way to destroy him. Liam tells you to stay out of his way before the fight starts, and if you take that advice literally, he quickly loses track of you. This allows you to get right up behind him for a super heroic stab in the kidney. I'm sorry, Master. I won't let him get away. I promise. <laughs> Ooh, make that both kidneys. Look mate, you've got a flamethrower. Let's not talk about fairness here. Once you've pulled your knife out of his abdomen, all you have to do is leg it back to a hiding place and repeat this process over and over again, because Liam doesn't ever learn from his mistakes or apparently know how many kidneys he has. All right, Nicolas Cage, you're next. Name the time and place. <laughs> so that was seven bosses you snuck up behind like a total hero. Well done, I hope you're proud of yourself. Can you think of any other examples of bosses that you uh, had to sneak up on? If so, then drop them in the comments. And if you liked this, then why not check out some of the tabletop stuff that we do on this channel, Outside Extra, and our sister channel, Outside Xbox. We play D&D, we play Blades in the Dark. It's a good time, so why not check that out? And like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. All right, see you next time. Goodbye.